welcome to my channel. So behind me you see my lab, my lab. Oh, I love doing that. Anyway, if you want to ask me any questions uh, regarding watch repair or anything else, you can contact me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com, jdwatchservice at gmail.com. Thank you very much for the comments you made on my last video. Last video was watchmaking as a hobby. How the heck would someone get into that? I know at the end of that video I did a little bit of card uh, magic and I also do uh, card magic. I'm a magician. Um, I can teach you how to roll coins down your hands and cheat at cards. So there you go. So anyway, so we have a very puzzling situation today. Very puzzling situation today. So what I have here is a little tiny box. It's a box. It's American for box. Box. It's a box. Anyway, so roof and box. Roof is Boston, I think. Box is probably Boston too. Anyway, so here's a little tiny box. We're going to open this little box and see what's in here, and then we're going to go from there. And this is going to be really interesting. Try to change things up a bit. Yeah, see, now the box is gone. The box is gone, and I go one, two, three, pow, the box is back. There's my magic trick for today. What? What? The background changed. How the heck did that happen? I don't know. All right, we're back again, just trying to change things up a bit for you. I'm playing with my software. That's what people do. They play with their software. There's the box. There's what's in it. So let's get a close-up on this and have a chat about this stuff. So again, what do we have in this box? Let's have a look at the mystery in here. And we have, this is a dog, I believe, for a lathe. And then I've got this little thingamajabby doohickey here. And this jobby doohickey here. Um, and then I've got a whole bunch of little jobby doohickeys right there. So different sizes. So what could this be used for? Big surprise, what could this be used for? Well, this is a total, total mystery of what this could be used for. The thing is, is I have the answer because I'm the guy who ended up buying this because I was sick of doing something by hand and decided to buy a tool. Yes, another tool. I bought another tool. I need a do like this, one of those video in and out things, right? It's the horror movie look. Anyway, I bought another tool, um, and this tool was to make things easier. Let me just explain this tool a bit. All right, what is a jewel setting? So if you look on the upper right hand side of the screen, you'll see a watch movement. And let's say right in the center, you have a jewel setting. So it's the center wheel jewel and it's a raised setting. So let's have another look at what the setting might look like. All right, there's what the setting was would look like. And as you can see from that, it might be difficult for me to point using my camera pointing at an object. But as you can see from this, we've got the round setting. Um, and then inside of that setting, there's a jewel. And then you can see the pivot poking out of the jewel. The setting is held in place with three screws. So. I have a video and I'll, I'll add a link online on how to make a jewel setting by hand. In this case, um, I was using, to make a setting similar to this, I was using a brass rods. So here's a whole whack of different brass rods. And let me just grab a brass rod that might be uh, appropriate for this. This is probably around five millimeters across. And I would face that rod off and using gravers, I would cut that setting to look exactly like that. So I'll, I'll include the video in the link um, so you can look at the video on how to make a jewel setting on a lathe. So a setting uh, like this would look like, let me just grab one of these settings and show you what it looks like. All right, here's an old setting. It's got a cracked jewel in it, um, but it's uh, representative of what a setting would look like. So you've, as you can see, it's round um, and you would cut this setting uh, out of a piece of brass like this. So this would be copper or brass? Copper, I think copper. Or maybe brass. Anyway, you get your copper, brass, no this is brass. No it's not, it's copper. Anyway, 
you've got your setting here and you've in your and you've got your rod and your rod has to be around the same diameter as the setting is or it can be bigger and you're cutting it down um, these are brass rods <laughs> I'll go look it up so this one is a lot bigger which means you'd have to grave that down to size and then you'd have to make the hole in the setting with your graver and then you'd have to cut that step that you can see in that setting right there's a small step in that setting uh, right there um, that you can see. Let me get my famous curve pointer. Famous, very famous curve pointer. So there's the uh, the outer rim of the setting right there. And then you've got the inner rim of the setting right here. So when you're cutting the setting, as you can watch in my video on how to make a jewel setting, you're cutting the first diameter here and then you're cutting it down to the second diameter. Uh, before you do any of that though, you're actually making the hole the right size. It's smaller on this side than it is on this side. And then you're very carefully cutting a groove, as you can see here, which causes a little bit of material to be left in the inside of the donut to cover the jewel and to keep the jewel in place. So that just encapsulates the jewel. See how that flew out? Didn't I do a video a while back on how to use tweezers and so things don't fly? Anyway, that little setting, just like the movie Alien, when the guys came out of those shells, it just grabs that jewel on this side, and you have to burnish that jewel in with a special tool that's used to push that metal in. But the first thing you need to do is cut that groove. Well, this new tool solves a lot of that. So first of all, the new tool allows you to, to actually, I'll use the curve pointer again, to cut the hole into the brass rod. So this part of the tool here would enable you to cut the hole back deep into the rod and to a certain uh, depth. So that's going to cut the, that initial hole into the rod and that'll cause that to cut it and be absolutely flat on the end. So you're going to get your initial hole here and then this part of the tool here is making the groove that you're going to fold over the jewel. So you need to cut this first hole here allows your pivot to go through. So this is the hole that's right in on if you look up really close on this side here. I think I'll get a little closer to describe that. All right, let's start describing this here. So so what I have here is this part of the jewel here where the jewel is, the part of the setting rather where the jewel is, right? That is cut um, by this here, which cuts the initial entry hole. If I flip that jewel over, it's going to be smaller on this side, as you can see. So it's a lot smaller on this side. So this diameter would be this diameter here. And then of course the jewel actually has to sit in this setting. So the sitting side, as you can see there, is cut by this diameter of this uh, tool. So this diameter cuts the sitting side and you may may not be able to see that but this tool has got a cutting edge right here I think you can see that it's beveled ever so slightly but that's a cutting edge so that cutting edge cuts that second diameter there and then this part of the tool you can see how close this is to the edge this part of the tool cuts that little tiny lip or the the channel that's cut around the diameter is cut with this part of the tool which gives you the channel uh, by cutting the channel it gives you that little piece of material that wraps around that jewel to keep it in place. So it's all done in one shot. So, um, and, and what we're going to do today is try this out to see if it works. I haven't used this tool yet, but I'm going to try to cut a jewel setting. Um, and I'll pick a smaller, uh, a smaller one here than this. So that's, this is how the tool is used. And it's got a lathe dog on the back end. So this is the lathe, uh, what would this be called? Pulley, I guess? So this needs to go into the lathe and spin like this. The issue I have is that with my lathe, I should be able to just take this shaft and push it in and have this just spin naturally. So what I can do is actually just cut a rod that fits into here um, and this tightens that up. So this this actually... Um, it comes in a couple of pieces here, as I can see. Uh, this here is tightening up 
here on this particular cutting tool here and then this tightens the screw on the top tightens that up and move that over here get my fingernails out of the way this screw tightens uh, this part of the cutting tool this screw here allows me to adjust this part of the cutting tool so this allows me to get in closer or further away depending on how much material I want to re remove and again the, dia the major diameter here is this diameter here and this will cut ever so slightly into that so selecting the right material is fundamental to do this properly um, I can select uh, this is, needs to be faced off but I can select this material for example and if I look at the centering of this this would center like this and you could see the material would cut on the edge there I just have to figure out how to mount this into the lathe to allow this to be perfectly centered um, and not cause issues uh, when I want to cut. So my wife accuses me of heating up my coffee like 20 times a day because the first thing I do in the morning is I make a full caffeinated coffee so I can start my heart, get my energy up, levels up. Basically I'm addicted to at least one coffee with caffeine in it in the morning. Then I make a decaf coffee so my brain says, oh you're having a second coffee here but I'm really not having a second coffee. I'm having um, a second coffee. So, but it's decaf, so it doesn't count. And I've heard people say, well, if you're drinking decaf, why do you even bother drinking the coffee because it's decaf? Well, I like the taste of coffee. So, and so here's my second cup, cup of coffee here, and I've got to sip it to determine whether it's hot or not. If it's not, I've got to go downstairs and put it back in the microwave to have the molecules rattle around, cause friction, thereby heating up the coffee. Hold on. It's getting very close to tasting like Kool-Aid. So what we're going to do is go down and heat this thing up. So if you're going to do this very detailed um, and specific watch work, it's not recommended that you do this watch work while you're in the Swiss Alps. So even though the Swiss Alps are very beautiful, um, it can be very distracting to do watch work while you're in the Swiss Alps. Also, it's not recommended you do lathe work specifically where there are cows around in the Swiss Alps because the cows will be also very distracting. Uh, my point is you need to be very focused on doing lathe work so you don't screw it up. So this little spindle here I'm pointing at is my problem. Like what do I do to get this thing running in the lathe so it's running true? To center that, to make sure this runs true, to make sure I can use this little cutting edge to cut with so there you go. I was able to figure out on my video how to point, sort of, to the stuff that I'm doing work with. There it is there. So there's the spindle. And i got to make sure this spindle somehow gets out of there or I'm able to stick that into the lathe somehow. Because I do have a uh, tailstock um, and I don't need this crap in here. I just need to use this end of it. So I've got to figure that out. As well, this comes with these smaller settings so I can actually, um, or cutters, so I can actually use um, a, a much smaller cutter. Um, again, that's the width, the larger width of the setting, and this is where the hole would be punched through. So this is the hole that you would see on the upper side of, this, of the setting, not the lower side of the setting. And as you can see, some of these are pretty friggin' small. So if I can use that word friggin'. So, so I would put those into this uh, chuck setting jobby do hickey device um, and pick the right size for the particular watch. So so it's um, if I can get the right size of this of the actual uh, watch jewel uh, and say that's a hundred and the size of the jewel is like 120 um, then I gotta look at the hole uh, the jewel hole that with the pivot in and maybe I can modify that jewel hole pivot uh, or the jewel pivot hole to make sure that fits so there's some options there so the first thing would be to get the right diameter setting and then cut the setting properly and everything else so the other thing is to make sure I've got the right setting diameter with the right hole diameter although these cutters have nothing to do with the hole diameter just the setting diameter Okie dokie, the first thing I need to do is put a mat down. And what I've done is taken a very simple dish mat. This is a dish mat. 
It's for draining a draining board, dish draining board. And I cut this down to size so it just fit my lathe. And that way, and it's got a lip here. And that way all of the filings that I get from the lathe from cutting stuff come on this mat. I don't have to worry about uh, messing stuff up. Now here I've got one of my lathes, as you can see in this very nice descriptive lathe picture. See if I can rotate that just a little bit here and get a little bit more of the lathe and not my shirt in play. Um, so I've got the belts off the lathe. Uh, this is a counter shaft here that just spins around. It's nicely oiled. I didn't have to re-oil this a lot. It's got plenty of oil on it. That's the counter shaft. It's pretty gummy, so you keep your hands away. So I just roll the belt onto the lathe here. Also make sure that the stop here on the back of this lathe is out and you don't have a situation where it's going to jam up all of a sudden. So this lathe is pretty good so I tend to just leave this thing sticking out just a bit like that and I don't have to worry about it. There's a spindle on the end and I got to put a collet on the end of this. This lathe should have plenty of oil in it. I might squirt a little bit more oil in there. Then on my counter shaft I've got this crappy little belt here that I use. And this belt is um, attached to the back end of this, which is a sewing machine motor. So let's have a quick look at that for a second. There it is. So I'm going to take this belt here and I'm going to attach this to the uh, sewing machine motor. Just put it over the edge and put your finger on the belt on the top like this. And then let me just move that camera up again and just roll that belt over like that. Um, and that that'll get jammed onto that nice little sewing machine motor here so and make sure everything is loose before you start the lathe up because if it isn't you're going to be in deep doo-doo you're going to have problems uh, with working on this lathe so so let me just make sure i suck in my gut while i'm doing this work i'm just kidding um, and now i've got my tip over tool rest and my tailstock so my tailstock is a micrometer tailstock which is really nice um, but this will hold a collet so my challenge here with this is to get this crazy dog thing, um, get this set up somehow so it will be centered in here and it'll run through the material um, on this side here. So, so I've got my first thing I need to do is pick a piece of, of material I'm going to work on. And because I'm lazy and don't want to replace anything, I think I'll use this rod that I had available. And I've got to measure this and then get a collet and then face this off. So I've just discovered something with this little dog thing. It actually comes out. <laughs> oh my god. I was so worried about this being attached. I figured this part here was attached to the end here, but it actually comes out. So I can actually find a collet for this cutting part as well. So let's just go find the collet for that. All right, so this is also slightly tapered, so I wouldn't need a live or a uh, call it holding tailstock to hold this in place because it is tapered. So I could just jam that into the end of a tailstock, um, and and that would probably work just fine. So that's but but in my case, I do have a a call it holding tailstock, so I'll just hold this with a call it, and we're good to go. So I'm going to grip this high up here so I'm going to take this here and then grip it pretty high up so I've got a pretty good grip on that collet even though it's tapered and see if that'll work and keep the collet steady centered so there's a little bit of a wobble in there because this is tapered so I don't have to use a collet holdings tailstock for this which is really nice I also have to make sure that these are tight so I don't have other issues so this is kind of cool this was worked out very good so I found my uh, piece of uh, brass it is brass keep saying copper but I believe this is brass these are brass rods and the collet size for this is a 40 as you can see so that's a 40 so I can put that collet in first and grab that with my uh, there we go and you hold hold the spindle here while you tighten it but first I need to put the material in um, of course it would be in the way let me just do that okay there we go so the materials in there uh, the smartest thing to do without facing this thing off is actually to to file it to just grab a file and file it back and forth I may have a file upstairs here that I can use um, Otherwise, I'll put it in my my bench vice downstairs 
so I don't rattle my tailstock or my stock too much, my headstock too much. So I'll face that off first with a file, and then I'll face it off with uh, with the lathe. So got to get this faced off. I'll be right back. There, I successfully faced this off. It took like five seconds to face this off in the Basamante. I put this on a drill vise just to hold it flat, and and now I just have to tighten this in place. Make sure that's pretty tight. It doesn't have to be, you know, hell bent tight. It just has to be tight. So I wouldn't worry about being too tight. Um, I do have to plug my lathe in, otherwise it doesn't work very well. So I always touch my desk before I plug stuff in because I just ran upstairs. Am I out of breath? This is terrible. So there we go. And my tip over tool rest seems to be in, almost in the right place. So I just have to make sure that's aligned properly. And I get a graver out to start. Tighten that at the bottom to just flatten that, just to flatten the end of that piece of metal. I'll just show you my setup. So I bought a couple of these for holding the gravers. Um, can I set that there without falling? Again, making videos is... So this is my set of this around. This is my set of gravers here that I have. Um, these three longer ones here are the uh, larger gravers and I just have to look in there and make sure that uh, it's the right tip. So I'll show you that. So these are from autofree.com. Autofree. Autofree.com. These gravers, they're tungsten GRS tungsten carbide gravers. So there it is there just so you can look it up. So and that's the square. It's a 2.2 millimeter graver and it's long. So it says 2.2 2 millimeter times and it doesn't tell you what it's times. But that's the graver. Let me just have a look at this. See what this looks like. I'll just try to keep this in camera. And there it is there. And I make sure that I actually finish my gravers off so they're sharp as heck. And I'll also show you just quickly the diamond plate I use. I get that off of AliExpress. The diamond plates cost me almost nothing. The other four gravers that I have are two are flat on the end and two are round. And they're here they are here. And I'll just take this one out just for your well-being. So I marked this graver. First of all, it fell on the floor. So I'm going to pick it up. But I marked this graver 4F. So that's a 4 millimeter graver flat on the end. And here's what they look like. They're not cheap, but they're very good. So if I look at the end of the graver, I'll use my hand again to allow the focus of the camera. This is flat on the end, as you can see. So I use that graver. I would use this graver to remove um, a lot of material if I wanted to, but it's still pretty precise. It's still four uh, flat on the end. And then the other gravers, this is when I make balance staffs more so than, than doing what I'm doing right now. But I just wanted to let you know. And these are also tungsten carbide. And the two round, so I've got a four flat and a four round. So here's a two round graver. And this is to allow me to make the slope on the balance staff. So let me just see if I can get close up with this particular graver. There we go. You can see the cut on my finger. So that is two millimeters on the end, which is pretty friggin' small. And I'm using the tip right there, that tip of the graver right there, not the other side. And I'm able to get in very close with the balance staff and then round that out, round out the pivot on the end, right? So this here, if I were making a balance staff, this material would be much too big, plus it's the wrong material. I'd be using blued steel. So I don't really need, need these gravers for this, for this cut to face off the material, but I'm gonna use uh, this graver instead. And as I said before, Got to make sure the graver is sharp if you're using blued steel. But in this case here, the graver is probably sharp enough already to uh, cut this. Uh, is it brass or copper? I think it's copper. To cut this copper rod. And again, do not do this work if you are in Switzerland on a mountain and there's cows nearby because that will be totally distracting. So true to my word, I'm going to show you what I do here. So I put this carbide graver into this holder and then tighten it like so and 
Just leave a little bit on the end so there's enough graver in there to grab it, like that. And I'm going to be facing this off, so I want to make sure that I've that the graver is a little tiny bit below center here, I think is what I want. So it can be above center a bit when you're facing it off, but but I also think I want to adjust the uh, the face here, the tip over tool rest, so I can get in at a good angle here for facing this off. Um, and I want to make sure, so that's not too bad there as an angle, so that's not going to be too bad. So i got to tighten up this part here, the blade itself, the tool rest part. And then I am going to test my motor here to make sure i got some action here. So I do turn that off. So there we go. So now i got some action. Now I'm going to get in a bit close and I don't need any special, uh, uh, special close-up visor stuff for this. I'm just going to see what I can do here. There we go. And I got glasses on right now. Uh, I don't need safety glasses because this material will not pop up and cause any damage to me. So, you know, when I'm spinning this, I want to keep it at a bit of an angle. I don't want to keep it flat. I'm going to have to get rid of that tab on the end as well because I'm creating a little circular knobby on the very end of this part. And because this is a copper rod, I can remove material fairly well. It's still a bit warbly, so I still have more stuff to remove. And I'm trying to make it flat, as flat as possible. And the shavings are coming off nicely. There we go. You don't have to press too hard if this is sharp. So now I can feel that there's very little bump going on, which is nice. And now I can feel it being almost completely flat right now, so no bump at all. Now I want to trim this knobby down at the back, so this little thing here, you need to trim this back, okay? So see if I can adjust my camera a bit so you can see this a bit better. So I think um, it's a little tricky with the self with this camera because it does focus on the object here. So, but I got a little knobby right there. This is my guitar fingernail. In case you haven't seen my videos, I play blues guitar mainly. But uh, and you can find it in my uh, video if you subscribe to my channel. So there's a little knobby on the end here. I want to get out of there. So, so I'm going to just chew that away here. Um, I need to lower this just a bit because my my uh, graver is a bit too high to get to that knob properly, right? So, so let me just get in here close and try to get rid of this and shave it down. All right, there it's gone now. And then I can use the other side of the graver here to just take a little bit of material off the end. There we go. Now you can see how pretty that is. I mean, this this is this is a nice looking uh, piece now. So so that'll that that'll work well now to uh, to chop that end off. So so now I've got this cool uh, tool. Um, you want to make sure that's sharp. You want to make sure that the screws there are tight. So I'm gonna grab one of my big screwdrivers. I just moved my coffee, by the way. It's getting cold again. Damn it. So I just want to make sure that this is tight. So, which it seems to be. And as you can see in this tool, you can, let me just get my hand back in here again so you get a good focus. As you can see in this tool, you can rock this piece back and forth depending on where you want to cut that little trench in the jewel setting. So you can rock this little piece right here back and forth. So you just have to loosen this. And then there's a little handle in the back here and you just rock that back. So, and these are all replaceable here, and they've got a beveled cut on it. So, so I think I can just, it's in the thing now, but I just, I'm going to make sure it's tight, so I'm just going to go in here with a screwdriver and tighten that up. I'm going to get my fingers out of the way, because whenever you get your fingers in the way of something like this, um, it tends to uh, bite you at the end of the day. So, 
So this is, um, let me see, is that tight? I'm going to play with it a bit here and see if I can tighten that up a bit. So I'll be right back. Okay, now I want to get my tip over tool rest out of the way. I don't need that anymore. And i got to find home with this particular cutting tool here. So I'm putting that into the, uh, the tailstock here and seeing if I can find, just, just wheel that thing in somehow. Got to find home. Turn it around until I, oh, there it is. So that goes in there. And then just my spindle is on the other side. So I tighten that spindle up. There's what I'm doing here. I'm just tightening that up like this. And this thing is already tight because if you don't tighten this, then the whole thing turns. So what I want to do is have the least amount of distance here, right? Because you get more accuracy as you get in closer to the part. So you want the least amount of distance there. So I want this to be tight. So I tighten this up on top like so, and then I can tighten the spindle on the back end of this um, to a degree, right there. It's pretty tight there. And so now um, I loosen this up because now I, what I want to do is be able to push this into the part. So I'm going to move this close, snug it in like that, move it close like this, and then tighten up the tailstock. Now the tailstock is tight, the headstock is tight. Um, I'm looking at to see if I've got a cutting surface there. I do. So I should be able to cut right into this setting and uh, and get a really nice cut out of this. So I'm just going to move this over just a bit so you can see what's going on here. Um, hoping to get it. I may have to move it over more to get the focus right. So if I do that, then I'm getting a better focus on this. So, which is a better thing to do. So there we go. So that's it right there. So now I'm going to turn this. So I, but I have to have this loose to push it in, right? So what I'm going to do now is put a little bit of cutting oil on. So this is the cutting oil I use. So it's, there it is. It's M I B R O cutting fluid. So we're going to use this cutting fluid here. And I have found that with with steel, with blued steel, with other object or other cutting, that this cutting fluid is is god. So you can put a little bit on your finger like that, and then rub it onto the blades, right? And it's, of course, it's not going to cause any rust issue or anything on the blades. But this will definitely help the cut. I have found so this cutting fluid is gold, Jerry. So now I'm going to see if I can do the cut here. All right, here we go for the cut, and I've got to go all the way back here because I need to get this the size of the jewel. This is a pretty big blade to use, and this is pretty thin material, so I'm hoping that uh, this works. Um, actually, when I'm looking at this here, I need this blade to be out further um, because I want this hole cut first, then I want the tren trench cut second. So I need this blade actually to be further. Uh, to be closer because I'm going to get to this part of the jewel setting here and I want this to be cut in. So let's just move this a little closer. Alright, I'm going to move this blade. This blade here needs to go out a bit. So I need to fold this blade out a bit. It seems to be right to the end, which is uh, probably not where I want it to be. So pull that blade out just a bit because I want this blade and the cutting blade on the tip here I want this tip cutting blade to be um, cutting after this blade I believe I think that's the way it should work well let's just try this out anyway and see what happens because this is going to go all the way in and it's going to hit here but this blade here probably needs to be either moved back or let me see I'm going to tighten this and loosen this. I'm going to stand on two legs and see what happens. So let me just loosen this blade here and see if I can back this off or what. This is, I'm running with the blade here, so this is Blade Runner. So this rocks back and forth. Okay, so that gives me the, the details. And that gives me the distance here that I am looking for, as you can see. Um, and it looks like it wants to cut 
the trench. Yeah, I figured this is for the first hole, and then the trench is the next one. So I'd want this one to be out further. So this is my, I have not used this tool before. I'm just, this is live discussion. So yeah, this would be out further, so the trench cut would be like that, probably. Something like that. Because this blade would have to go, yeah, go in further first, and then you trench, then you cut the trench after. Maybe you take the blade out and don't cut it at the same time, I'm not sure. So, because if I do this, let me just see if this works here, and I just cut this, tighten this stuff up a bit. Yeah, that's, I'll tighten that up, and then I'll tighten this up a bit. I think I want to move this away, because my trench is so small. I'll just do it like that. Like this. And tap that. There we go. And then tighten that up here. Tighten this up. I think I tightened that already, but there we'll try that. I know I have to drill that down, so let's try drilling here, okay? Here we go. Alright, hold on to your horses because I'm starting my drilling here, so. I'm not sure how sharp this bit is because it's been such a long time since it's been used. I suspect this thing is a hundred years old. What I don't want to do is snap this bit. A little bit of cutting oil would be good right now. And I can sharpen the ends of these, this thing off as well if I want to, if I need to. And I think I'll put a little cutting oil in the hole as well. So just put it on your finger like this. Back everything off so you don't cut yourself. And then just put it, smudge it onto the hole like that. There we go. And then commence a cutting again. You can see how better it cuts when you get the cutting oil in there. I'm getting real material coming off this thing now. And you don't want to cut it at a too high a speed, so I want to pull that back again and brush off the uh, brush off some of the metal. Put a little more cutting oil on it. If you're if you're cutting um, steel, like blued steel, you absolutely need cutting oil for blued steel. There you see I, f I felt some crunching going on with my tip here, which is not good. So I'm going to have a look at that up close to see if I ruined anything. No, it still looks good, but it was crunching, which I don't like. Um, and it's still in there tight. Oh, you know what I'm seeing here? I'm actually seeing that it's not perfectly centered. I'm seeing that it's actually coning the inside. So this is not perfectly centered as I'm doing this. It's coning on the other side, which means I needed to center this thing up properly uh, before I actually started doing the job. So don't like that. So I'm going to back off and try centering this. All right, this seems to be almost impossible to center because it's uh, relying on this piece of metal here. It looks a bit bent when it grabs this, so it's relying on this to be centered. And I don't think that's going to work to center that. And when you tighten this up, it pulls up on that metal and doesn't sandwich it properly. So, so I think the best thing to do here is to actually remove this blade. Um, first of all, measure, measure where you want the second blade to be. So how close do you want this thing cut? Like so. So I'll measure this and then set that, set this blade 
right? So it's nice and tight like that. And then remove this blade altogether and call it that up in a different call it and just to use that width because the other ones don't come with that width. So I'm just experimenting here. So if I if I take this out completely, right? Just to remove this configuration here, this thing here, take this blade out here and then take this blade and actually uh, put that in a collet and see if I can grab that and whether it's centered or not. So now I've collet a displayed here so I can put this in my um, in my lathe here and just find home as they say. I just have to twist this a bit till it kind of finds home. There we go. It's riding in right now and then tighten that up. Should probably tighten my tailstock here a bit so it doesn't rattle around. So tighten that up and now I can use this hopefully to drill a center hole. So I'm just going to tighten this as much as I can like that and then I'm going to test for center here and see how close that is. It should touch the little mountain I made in the middle. Oh, look at that. I think it's perfect. And that's absolutely perfect because it's touching the little mountain that I made in the middle. I'm not sure if I can get my, my cord or my camera any closer. So I'm going to just face this piece off again or just get rid of that mountain in the middle somehow. Uh, I have to go pretty deep to do that. So maybe my best thing is to just face this off again. It shouldn't take too long to do that. And you can see there's a little mountain showing there in the middle. That was created by that device being just off from center. So, but I can still use the device because I preset the uh, the distance, the cutting distance. So. Just shave a lot of this material right off until it's flattened. There we go. I think that's enough. Get rid of that knobby in the middle somehow. There we go. Now, ideally, I want to center my piece with the with the lathe, but I see if I can see if I can do it with this uh, with this piece here that I have already. So. I'm going to do it by pushing that in and see if that's centered. It looks pretty centered, folks. Again, I need some cutting oil because this will not work without cutting oil. I'm going to put a little tiny drop of cutting oil on the end of this blade and see if I can rub it onto the actual piece of copper here. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if I can sharpen the end, the tip of that. So here I've got this big old diamond plate and I'm trying to line it up with the edge of this uh, this particular blade or part and I'm going to just rub this a bit to try to sharpen that. And I loosen that up here and just turn that around and then see if I can get the other side sharp as well. eyeballing this for now to see if I can just take a bit of material off here with this diamond plate. This is a 2500 grit diamond plate so I want to get a nice peak on this and not take too much material off. So, so that should should do hopefully. 
All right, now we got some cutting action happening as I sharpened it more with my plate, and we'll see if I can if it can dig down deep. I can see it cutting, which is nice. I'm not sure how sharp this will stay, but it's cutting. So that's a start, which is a nice thing. Pull that out. Put a little more cutting oil on there. I don't, I'm making a drill, a, a, a jewel setting, so I don't need to get super deep, but I do need to get this thing down to that secondary cutter right here. So I want to get that in nice and deep to get to that secondary cutter. And I may end up having to sharpen that thing too. I'm not sure. So I'm almost to the secondary cutter. Pull that out. Just use a brush here to get rid of some of this material. And I'm going to throw in some more cutting oil. You can never have too much cutting oil, folks. You can never have too much cutting oil. There we go. And I've left some on the end of my finger as well, so I can reapply that after. Get rid of some of the material from the end. You see that's getting in pretty deep now. Trying to get the right speed on the lathe here. And I don't want the bit to jam in there for sure. Which it shouldn't because it's got a peak on it, right? So it's going pretty deep. So that's uh I think that's a good thing. Uh, get some more cutting oil in the end here and then just jam it. Jam it in. See what I can do. Now this would be for a pretty big jewel setting here. Here comes the material at the end. I may have to sharpen that blade again. Because this is just an old steel blade, so... I don't know how how sharp this will remain. It's not carbide, which would be nice if it was a carbide blade. I'm just trying to get to that second blade here. A little bit more cutting material. I think I may have to sharpen that blade again, which is uh, nasty, but nasty but true. More cutting oil in there may help me. I think I'm almost at the second blade right now. I may have to clean off some of this oil in order to see what I'm doing. And, um, all right, now I'm going to just see if I can drive this home without having to sharpen that blade again. Although I have a sneaky suspicion it might need some sharpening. Yeah, that's not cutting anymore. I'm going to have to pull this out and sharpen it unless I can get my little plate back in here and just go j -j -j and sharpen that up. So I left the uh, blade inside and I sharpened it using the plate just at an angle. So I'm going to just try this again. Again, this is a, if this video bores the crap out of you, you can always speed it up because it's YouTube. So this is a test of this uh, vintage cutting device. So let's see if I can get this thing cutting again. Still not at the secondary hole, which is amazing. How deep I've gone with this thing, and uh, I 
actually when I look at the blade here on the end it looks like it wants to cut in the other direction which is a complete opposite to where my lathe is running that is not good that means I've got to somehow spin this lathe in the opposite direction that won't work yeah that's 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 probably my main problem here is that it's wanting to cut in the other direction although I did I did get it down to a piece so we'll just see if I can figure out how to get my raised lathe to run backwards so I ended up just twisting my belt one turn as on my motor side to do that but I think my cutter is on the wrong side now so now I gotta sharpen this to make sure it's sharp on the other side I really hope you're enjoying this adventure because it's a tough one but anyway I've got it sharpened on the other side now and I'm seeing if this takes material off it looks like it does folks look at that I've got material coming off now and now I've got the secondary level I need to figure out how to cut so I can see the material is coming off it's actually coming off the secondary level too so what I want to do here then is make sure the secondary level is also sharp so I can bring my my plate in like this see if I can do this without screwing it up and I'm looking I gotta put my plate at an angle to get this to get this edge here so so I can maybe I can't do it from the bottom I gotta do it from the top so I gotta angle this a bit and then go like that and go like this there we go and that should should be enough. A little more oil, put it on my finger, like so, and then just drop this oil on here and then see if this cuts. funny like one blade I guess they both have to they're cutting in opposite directions so no oh, there we go I got a cut here I'm pressing pretty hard right now because it's got to cut a hole in the center while it's cutting a hole on the other side as well so so it's not an easy thing to do I think more sharpening is required all right, add it again here, and a little bit of cutting stuff, and I got the outs, the far end of this blade sharpened again to, to dig into the material, and there we go. It's working a little bit better now. Just trying to dig it in on both sides. It's not easy. And I need a little bit more of the old cutting oil here. And put that on there and the lathe is going to be full of cutting oil. deeper and then that's it it's 
very hard to uh, to cut this. It's without the tungsten blades. Carbide blades are gold, Jerry. And I'm trying to cut this on the end, and I'm not sure whether the end here is holding me back or the other side is holding me back. And I just sharpen the blades and put some cutting oil on them, and let's see what kind of result I get. Well, I'm getting a better cut right now, so I think it has a lot to do with the sharpness of this thing, and I think because of the material, I think it dulls, it dulls pretty quickly. So I sharpened the tip of the blade and the other tip, so, so there we go there. So there's, I think I'm almost done the setting. I'm going to, to uh, I don't know if I want to go any deeper than this. If I go faster, it tends to just, uh, it doesn't work if I go faster. So let's just say that's deep enough, and I'm going to see if I can cut the trench. Oh, well, I'm cutting some more here. I just got to get rid of some of the crap on the end here. And doing too bad now. I think cleaning it up is the key here. Just clean up the end here and then go back in. Let's see if I can move my lathe over so you can have a better look at this. So there's the uh, this very small trench I got going here and this feeds in this way here so it's a uh, it's pretty hard to get the right angle on the lathe here all right so that I think is the best angle I can get so you can see that going in there and this is where the uh, where I had to sharpen these blades right here and I had to sharpen the end blades here as well just to get enough sharp blades in order to uh, to get this thing to actually work there's a little bit too much cutting oil so I'm going to just see if I can cut this again. Now the... Uh, I think a slow cut is better than a fast cut with this material. There we go. Got it coming out now. And then clear it out a bit and then go back in again. Clear it out again and then go back in again. Clear it out and then go back in again. It's all technique. All right, I think that's deep enough for now just to, to sh show what the trench will look like once I cut it. Otherwise I'm going to have to sharpen this up again. Going crazy sharpening this. There we go. The speed needs to be just right on this lathe or else it doesn't work. So Let me see. i got to get the right focus here. I think that's good enough. So there we have it. There's the trench that you can see right there. 
Um, I'm going to go in a little closer here to have a look at that. And that. So there's a rim on this side. Get my hand in here so we can get a focus. There's a rim in there. That's where the jewel would sit. So the jewel would sit right in there in this little trench. Then there's a deeper hole that was cut by this blade here that goes deep. And, and now I've got to take that other bit, this one here, that was already pre-measured and see if I can cut that very small trench on there, which would save me boatloads of time uh, in watch work. So let me just take this off and then <coughs> see if I can cut that other piece without a problem. <sighs> Once you put this collet on tight, it's almost impossible to get it off. <laughs> just gonna <laughs> struggle at this and be right. So here's a configuration I had before, but this was off-centered. So, so what I need to do now is just take this blade out and then make sure that when I spin this other blade around, it's just spinning around the edge of this, uh, of this piece of metal and it's not going to wobble. It's going to be perfectly around the edge. And as I can see right now, it's not perfectly around the edge. It's too far in, so I just have to tap that over. And hopefully that'll work. So if I just tap this, bring it up close to the material. Still too close. It looks pretty good there. Test it in four different places. And that's not too bad right there. So if I could tighten that and it stays, life would be wonderful. So I'm going to just tighten this in a bottom screw here. And hopefully this stays in place. Of course, my screwdriver is moving, which doesn't help. And then I'm going to test it again to make sure it's staying in place. I'm just going to go around the piece of material here and, and just make sure it doesn't fall outside, as you can see. And I'm not sure how much cutting this thing can do, but I'm just going to try it out. It doesn't need to be a lot of material that it cuts. so. So I'm going to do that. Let me just clean the end off of this first just a bit. Do that with that and then maybe a piece of Rotico. Just Rotico the end of this just to get rid of all of that extra material that was sitting there. And I'm not sure if I can, I don't think I can do a close up because the lathe is kind of wrapped around the corner and all kinds of stuff right so I'd have to shift that incredibly maybe I'll try to do that all right you'd have to actually see my lathe configuration right now to believe this so so there we go so that little pointer the, the little end there goes all the way around but it just touches the edge of this so I'm just going to see if I can I'm using my camera right now to look at this and not my uh I can't look at it the way I have it on the uh so I'm just going to cut around the circle here. Now I'm going to have a look at that and see if, what kind of trench I got. You know, that's not too bad at all. That's uh, looking pretty good. Let me um, get rid of some of the material here. And you can't see it, but I'm going to show it the after. But the trench looks pretty good. Ooh, easy now. I don't want to press too hard because it'll snap. But you know what I need is some cutting oil. Rose are red, violets are blue, here's some cutting oil. Use it. <laughs> I 
All right, that's enough of a trench. Now I'm going to take this out. Not sure if you saw that, but I'm going to take this out now and um, clean it up, and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, just move the cameras over. So there it is. There, I took the blade out. So what I did was I adjusted that blade as close to that, as close to th to this blade as I could get. This small blade here as I could get, so I can get the right trench cut in here. So this is a lot easier, I think, than doing it by hand. I think it's a lot easier than doing it by hand. So now I just have to clean the lathe off a bit, and get rid of all of this metal that's going to jam up and stuff. And uh, you just have to back off your, uh, there you go, your headstock a bit and then put it back to where it was. Make sure the belts are lined up and then you, I've already backed up off the uh, tailstock so there's no problem there. This is already good like that. And some of the material is just landed on here. I can sweep off onto my, my dish mat which is pretty handy. And then I just unplug the lathe. I'm good to go. Alright, that was a lot of fun. I got three leftover collets here that I use for this. I've got this device here. This actually looked really good when it was uh, cutting that the trench that I need to, to encapsulate that jewel. Um, the blade on the other hand was a pain in the butt. This thing needed to be sharpened big time. Actually that's not the blade. This is the blade. So this, this tiny little blade <coughs> need to be really sharpened a lot in order to cut into the brass. I mean copper. <coughs> um, not good, but still uh, it worked. Let me put that back in there. I'm not sure if the smaller blades would have a bit as big an issue uh, cutting in because this is a pretty big blade. And I think to uh, actually uh, prepare that blade beforehand uh, is important. This blade, on the other hand, needed no work at all, and it cut in really nicely into the into the metal. So that was a success, um, I'd say. Um, and overall, I think overall it was a success uh, because I did end up cutting it and making it the right size. So now what I'm going to do is show you that end piece to see what it looks like. So, so there's the tool. I'll uh, just put this over in the side a bit at an angle. Uh, and then show you what the, uh, the the end of it looked like. The lid wants to close, so we'll let the lid close. So there is the the end. So that's the end there. Um, it needs a little bit of a cleanup, I think. So let me just clean that up a bit and see if I can get some of that material out of there. All right, here's the end piece that I've completed, and as you can see. The outer rim, I just take that material off completely, so I just remove the material on the outer rim. The inner rim here that burnishes around the jewel is perfect, so that worked really well. And then, and then of course, the jewel would sit in this big opening here. And then the pivot, when the jewel is completed, would fall through the hole right there. So that would fall through the hole there. So this tool actually worked. Um, but it didn't work as a single unit because it wasn't aligned properly within the lathe. I couldn't align it properly. Now maybe if I used a uh, just a normal uh, tailstock and then threw it in it might work, but uh, I used a collet holding tailstock. But in general um, it works um, and it was able to cut that line which is which was tricky to cut because it's slightly offset and the tool here, let me grab this tool again, uh, allows you to cut this offset, which is really nice because I've tried doing that in my with my my uh, lathe here, and it's I can do it, but it, but this tool kind of works nicely. So I'm able to measure this and then just drop it down and use this to cut that little rim because that's the hardest part to cut. And I'm sure if I sharpen these other these other uh, tools here, these are some of them here. I'll just grab one here. Um, here's one that's representative of what we were working with here and if I am able to to use this and sharpen it before I plunge in then I probably won't have any issues here using this tool so so it's good because it cuts for the smaller hole and the larger hole and then I can use the other tool to to cut the rim around the edge so that's my video 
So that's my uh, video for today, and all I can say is, oh my god, that was a lot of work. So figuring out how to use this tool properly, and as I said before, it was impossible to center this tool in the in the, uh, in the device that it had, but the out, outer rim cat, uh, cutting uh, tool was invaluable. That's really good. That's going to make it a lot easier. And also, uh, I'll have to figure out how to figure out how to make a jig to sharpen those cutters properly so that they uh, they don't have such a hard time cutting through that copper uh, rod. So, or is it brass? No, it's copper. Anyway, so um, so that's my video for today. If you got any questions, uh, want to talk to me about this. Uh, you can uh, talk to me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com or leave a comment on my video. Uh, uh, sub please subscribe to my channel. Um, I enjoy the comments and I like do doing these videos to help other watchmakers out there figure stuff out. So thanks a lot and enjoy your day. Thank you very much.